when you mix Meryl Streep, Hugh Grant, uh, a good supporting cast, awesome costumes, beautiful set design, and the perfect era, you should get an amazing movie. Um, we watched Florence Foster Jenkins today, and we expected that. Um, it was visually appealing, the acting was brilliant, all performances were on point, although the film did lack in its sort of frame and its main um, aspects. Direction. Yeah. Uh, we felt that the directors also may have been starstruck by Meryl, because <laughs> the film seemed to shift to be all about her. Um, but on the good side, this film was positive, in, from a visual perspective, and if you enjoy watching a film for its actors and its method acting, definitely a, a great film. The film tried to tell three important stories. Firstly, the message of how music can impact one's life. Secondly, living life despite going through hardships. In this case, Florence had syphilis, which she was living with. And thirdly, the story of Florence Foster Jenkins. Um, we felt that these were these sort of got lost in the mix of all the prettiness and the good acting. Matt. So, so yeah, I think that's a good summation. Um, really, what let this movie down was that it didn't know what story it was going to tell, and it kind of felt like it was telling the story of uh, Florence Foster Jenkins as the main story, and that's kind of problematic because there's you know. She's the one percent. She's the one mm. percent people who had so much wealth that for the rest of us, we can't relate to that character, mm. and we can't get behind that character, and we can't really support it. And so, if you are part of the one percent, you're going to love this movie because it's about your people. <laughs> um, but if you're not like the ninety-nine percent of us, and most certainly Talia and I, uh, <laughs> you're not going to really particularly care. I mean, there are points in the movie where you're like, "Yeah, oh, that's nice," but she's rich. Like, I could also deal with things if I was rich. Mm. And so the important, the more important stories, or at least the more story, the stories that could be more relatable to, were always overshadowed by this. Well, she's got money, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, the syphilis story, surviving fifty years for syphilis, with syphilis, and the tragedy of, wedding, of getting it from her first husband on her wedding night. That's some pretty emotional stuff that just kind of got brushed aside. Yeah. Um, also, and, the importance of music. Yeah, and the importance of music just for the sake of. Um, enriching the soul and being something that the soul feeds on also kind of suffered because that isn't where the climax was. The mm. climax of this movie was around about her. Exactly, yeah. it was around her life. I mean don't get me wrong, it's really sad when she dies at the end, right? We're not part with people. <laughs> but it didn't have an impact. It it didn't resonate with us and I don't think it's going to resonate with a lot of people yeah. because it focused on a story and around a life that whilst interesting didn't, uh, wasn't one that we were like, ooh, that's motivation, I can, I can do that, I can, I can be great, because she had lots of money. It became irrelevant by the way that it was told to us. Yeah, most certainly. Um, if you want a, a good movie that has similar uh, aesthetics but a better message, Gatsby would be yeah. one that you, you yeah. should watch. I mean, imagine if Gatsby was super rich. All of the meaning is lost out of yeah. of that story, and that's kind of what happened here. Yeah. There wasn't a, you know, and I think that is a case of poor directing. You know, you're allowed to change people's life stories to get a message across, and the directors and scriptwriters decided not to, and gave us a very one-dimensional almost. Yeah, a telling of this person's story, and so there isn't a lot of depth and emotion and message behind it, and that's kind of what the story feels like. It's like very pretty. You're not going to get a bad movie from these people, but. There's something missing and that something is the story. It was more about, you know, Meryl Streep sort of making a fool of herself and, uh, you know, just being game to put it yeah. all up and not sing well. Yeah. Um, which felt, it felt a bit contrived. A little bit that. like Mamma Mia. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> Even Chicago, although Chicago is set in the 20s, that was a good movie as well, aesthetically. for the, And the characters I felt were deeper in that. Yeah, that most movie. certainly, most um, certainly. But it had interesting dynamics between the, the characters. Hugh's character was great. I heard he's getting Oscar buzz for this film. Uh, deserved in a way for his, if you look at his role and acting in a vacuum, yeah. it was good. And it was yeah. nice to see Howard from Big Bang Theory in another role. And doing well. Mm. And he was so out of his usual weird self. I mean, 
you did yeah, yeah, really yeah. well. You did really well. Um, so should we give a thumb? Yeah. Giving one. Yeah, no, I'm half, half one. Like I always say, Miro could act in a Snapchat video. And it would be good. It would win an Oscar. <laughs> so, so one for Miro. <laughs> yeah. Half for Miro, half for the visual. Okay. Cool. I'm Talia. I'm Matthew. And this has been the Critics Review of Florence Foster Jenkins.